Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside the Idaho Vandals with head coach Rob Akey. I'm Dennis Patchen. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks for being here. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great because I'm. We are one day closer to our first win, so I, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a good thing. Take me back to Saturday night. There were so many good things that happened in that football game. There were. There was a whale of a football game. I mean, it was as exciting as it could be. The only thing that was wrong with that football game was the outcome, the, the, the last play. Uh, one play away. I, I called it a game of inches after the game. We talked about that. I mean, there's so many things that were that one inch away from being able to give us the happy ending that we were looking for. And but I will say this. So, you know, if we make that one play. If we make the last play, whether it's to keep us to win it in regulation or in the overtime, whatever it was, just change the outcome of one play. And we live with the, you know, some of the penalties, some of the big plays, some of the turnovers. You know, those things you don't change any of those things. But the outcome is a, is a win. The the sun is bright today. We're all happy. Life is good. And we say, hey, well, you know, we're just going to clean up these couple things, and it'll be an even better win next time. Well, it's the same game. No, I don't like the outcome, and I don't like going into week five looking for our first win, not by any stretch, but that's where we're at, and we've, we've grown so much. You look at the first game. I, I look at where we've come from. first game was, was awful. You know, and we're sitting there. We had adversity. It's a one-score game at halftime. We're like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And then we go to the second ball game uh, at Bowling Green, and, you know, we're getting deep into the, to the second quarter, and, and a little bit of that was hovering. You know, we haven't scored yet. It's a one-score game. We hadn't scored yet. But then all of a sudden we get a field goal, uh, a scoring drive, and then we get a takeaway and another scoring drive. And it's a one-point game at halftime. And our guys are like, hey, okay, we're dealing with adversity a little bit better. And in the second quarter we go from having a chance to, to take the lead. You know, that's the one field goal we don't make. Uh, they respond by scoring a touchdown. We turn the ball over, they score another touchdown. Now we're at a two-score deficit, but our guys kept playing. Now we ran out of time that night. Is that acceptable? No. But we responded to adversity a little bit better. We made some things happen. Then we come into the next week, and we did a much better job of preparing. The number two team in the country got our guys' attention. We had great focus. We did better film study. We had a, a strong week of practice. And we, those had been consistently getting better. And we went down there, and we slugged it out with them as long as we could. Didn't come close enough to winning the game. But we had we made plays, and we found out where we grew. We talked about all that last week. And then here we come with, uh, with the Wyoming game. And that was a game that was a football game from the start to the very last play of the game. E exciting as could be. We dealt with adversity all night long. We created some, we, we responded to it, and we kept on going. And our kids fought their tails off, and that's what made me sick at the end of that game. To walk in that locker room and look in those eyes. I saw real tears. I saw real hurt. I saw real pain because they laid it on the line the entire time. That's what we're supposed to do. And you're supposed to be, we need to be rewarded. They need to be rewarded. That's not a good thing, but is that a buildable thing? Can you take that pain, that, that angst that was in that locker room and Absolutely. channel it? Absolutely. And it needs to be channeled. Though. How do you do that? Well, it's got to be kept in a united way. They've, they've got to understand kind of what I'm talking to you about. How, hey, coach is right that we really have made, gained this much ground. That is where we're at right now. What we're doing is working. Now we just need a little bit more, more than any. We've got to stay together as a team, as a family, united, that, that fist. We have to be. Because the whole outside world, oh, they're throwing rocks now like a big dog. And, and you know, we've earned it because we didn't, we didn't win the game. That's fine. But you know what? All that negative crap isn't going to help us get this thing turned over the edge. It isn't going to help us get it done. But we pay attention to all the things that were good. No different. Like I said, if it was one, if the outcome was, was a W instead of not, the whole game, all the adversity that was created is all the same. We're fired up and life is good. Well, Life can still be good. We've got to get the W, and we're going to pay attention. So that's how I'm going to channel them, and that's how we're going to focus. And it's simply a little bit of, uh, more and less. That's what we need. More of the good. More of what we did that responded to adversity. You know, we, we turn the ball over right here and let them score first. We respond to that, and we come back. We, with three minutes to play in the game, three whatever it was, and uh, we just gave up a score to go behind. Did you stick a fork in us? Or were you believing that we we're going to go down there and score like my team did, like our team did, and what you saw us go down there and do? And we went this thing into overtime. You know, the guys are there. That's what we're going to focus on, us together. As long as us together, if, we're by, if we believe in what's going on and we stay together as a family, if we stay united in that, then we got ourselves a chance. But if we want to act like the outside world, boy, you'll see this thing to sit in. Well, and I've always, an old coach told me, if I punch you with my five fingers out, I'm going to get hurt. Bad. If I punch you with this, no, you're going to get hurt. That's right. So if you stay together... That's, that's the moral of that story. Tell me about what you took from your team 
on that drive at the end of the regulation when you tied it up? That they've got confidence, that they've got great belief, that they expect to win, that they, they know how to compete and they know how to respond to adversity. It's all better than what it was. Uh, obviously, we need to be one step further along, one play ahead, one, one less... Uh, don't create our own adversity. To me, that's 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 it as much as anything. You know, we we uh, we played throughout the course of the game, the the entire day, competed their tails off. But the adversity we responded to was self created. You know, we we did those things to ourselves. If we could just less of the creating our adversity, more of responding to adversity. Well, now all of a sudden we've got an opportunity. We're a pretty good football team, a real good football team. It is truly that close. Okay, the outside world's tired of hearing it. But as long as the inside world can see it and we can gain ground, I know it's there. And that's why our football team with, you know, three minutes, whatever was left in one timeout, can go the distance of this place and score as time runs out to put us into the overtime with an opportunity to win. I, the guys are believing in it. we got to cut down a few more big plays. Um, we, did a, we did a much better job of creating big plays. You know, we talked about the run game need to be better. We got over 200 yards rushing. We had a 100-yard rusher. Those things got better. We cleaned up our penalties uh, on the, you know, in regards to procedures and, and formations. and that. I mean, we didn't have any of those that had uh, been plaguing us a little bit offensively for the previous several weeks. Now, we had some, uh, we had some personal foul penalties that I wasn't real fond of. Um, one of them is absolutely stupid. Can't have that. Two of them, those are judgment calls by the white hat. In my opinion, it was poor judgment. Uh, affected our team. But we got to play to the level that you're supposed to play this game at. Uh, we continue growing that way. I think we can do a lot of things with these guys. Well, we'll talk to Rob a little bit more about uh, that uh, the, the Wyoming game leading into the North Carolina game when uh, when we come back. But uh, a very special story at the Kibbe Dome. It was Military Appreciation Day here uh, last Saturday in the Dome. And for one Vandal player, that had even more special meaning. Emily Johnson has more on that. Corey Sandberg plays linebacker for the Idaho Vandals, but before that, he was a squad leader in the Army. For the last eight years, the Vandal football team has dedicated one game every season to appreciate those who have served and are still serving in the military. At the time, I wanted to do my part, looking for adventure. That was pretty much it. I wanted to see if I want to make a career out of it or not. But most I just want to do my part. When Corey's younger brother, Dallas, first heard about his brother enlisting in the Army, he felt a great sense of pride. It's kind of uh, proud to have him enlist in the military. Uh, it was more, it was kind of something I could brag about. <laughs> it was kind of cool having an older brother in the military and stuff like that. But even though there was pride, the family also had some fear. After being deployed for 16 months, that fear became reality when Corey was shot and came home. It really makes you appreciate all the little things you have. Um, freedom especially, freedom to do what you know what you want whenever you want. And as for like personal challenges in life, it's made them a lot easier. I can rely on my Army experience and the hardships I went through, and it makes things quite a bit easier. For Inside the Vandals, this is Emily Johnson reporting. When you get a kid like Corey on your team, a young man like him who has been in a military <clears throat> situation, a little adversity on the football field is probably easy to overcome, I would think. That's an understatement, I believe. <laughs> this is a game, and, and, and uh, because of guys like him, we get the opportunity to play this game. And, uh, you know, they're, they're dealing with real life. And, uh, you know, we, we miss a block on third down. We might get sacked and have to punt the ball. One of those guys makes mistakes, somebody dies. And uh, I, mean, I think that's, that, that tells you an awful lot. And I think he's been a, uh, you know, a great, he is a great member of our team. I think he's been able to communicate uh, a lot of that. I think it's an awesome experience for he and his brother to be able to, to be able to have the opportunity to play football together, you know, especially when they were a world apart from each other and now to be able to be here playing ball together. You know, there, there's a lot of the great things that come with that. And he's a special guy. We come back, we'll talk about the North Carolina game. The Vandals back on the road this week when Inside the Vandals with head coach Rob Akey continues.